Hello students. Today's topic is item one of the book Effective Java by Joshua Block. Consider static factory method instead of constructors. So I would like to start with an explanation that a static factory method is an alternative to create objects without invoking the constructor directly and should not be mistaken with the factory pattern from the Gang of Four. The reason I'm saying this is because I made this mistake years ago when I first read uh, this book uh, the two are not the same thing. So now that, that is out, uh, the purpose behind the static factory method is the same as the class constructor. It's to provide instances of a class. That's, that's it. There's no other uh, purpose for the static factory method. However, uh, the static factory method differs from constructor in that you can have in a class several static factory methods each with different names that indicate purpose and I hope that this example will illustrate that the main advantages uh, are in the description below uh, as well as the limitations the first two are the ones that I'm going to cover in this video which are the methods have descriptive names which I just basically said you know like the name of the method should describe the function, the purpose behind the function. And also, another good advantage is that they are not required to provide new instances every time they are invoked. So when you invoke a constructor, you obviously get a new instance of that type uh, with a static uh, factory methods, then this doesn't have to be the case. And I want to illustrate those Two points here. Uh, the other advantages will be covered in uh, future videos when I go into other items that are covered in the book. And the limitations are that classes without public or protected constructors cannot be subclassed. This is not necessarily a limitation of the um, abstract factory method. Is more of the fact that when you go for immutability then you have to make protect, uh, constructor private and they cannot be subclass obviously. Uh, the other limitation is that factory methods are hard for programmers to find. And so you will have many many methods in a class and then you have to figure out which one of these returns an instance of this class. And so you know even though the names should be indicative of what the purpose of the method it does, they're harder to find that a constructor function, because the constructor obviously has the same name of the class, so those are way easier to find. And so with that, uh, I'm just going to just gonna show uh, my two uh, sample classes. Uh, so these are not in the book because the book doesn't, uh, in this item, it doesn't really have any code examples. I just coded this based on the information that was provided in the book. And so in this, uh, in this class, this example, I have an example that is uh, a little bit uh, wasteful. And that is because, as I indicated on the advantages, uh, you don't have to return uh, new instances every time you call a static factory method and so you can see I have these static factory methods ones that returns a red shape ones that returns a yellow shape and ones that return a blue shape and every time you invoke these functions a new instance of the object is returned and so when you go in, into this approach you might as well just use a constructor because you're not really gaining much. And so this is uh, the example that I came up with for a sort of bad implementation of the abstract factory method. And then you can see over here that I'm printing out uh, the, different, the different objects. Uh, maybe slightly better way of doing this is to actually have uh, immutable instances that you are uh, sharing. So when you call 
<coughs> excuse me, when you call the satisfactory methods, then you just basically return the same instance over and over. And so uh, if you are just learning to program, this is not a singleton, singleton pattern. Uh, this is called uh, limited, um, oh, the name is just escaping me, but it's limited instantiation. So uh, there's, in this class, there are three uh, classes and I'm limiting the uh, instantiation of this better shape impl to just these three instances, one that represents a red shape, one yellow and one blue, and I'm actually um, providing those. And so when I run these classes, they're going to look uh, very similar. Uh, the output will look just the same. So you can see here that it just returns red, yellow, and blue. And when I run this uh, better shape, it also prints out the same thing. So what is the advantage? So the advantage uh, here is that uh, the instances are cached and so uh, when I return uh, from this factory when I return an instance uh, then the same instance will be returned so if I comment this out and I run this and I try to print out Uh, you will see that um, these are returns. So if I call one of these functions twice, then this hash will be the same uh, every time, and it is. Uh, however, if I do the same here, and I comment this out, and I copy, let's say for example, red just for consistency. And I paste here and I run. You can see that this red and this red have different hashes. So this is returning one instance and this is returning a new instance. And because of that, that's very wasteful. Uh, you can argue that you only need one copy of a red shape and you don't need uh, many instances of shape. Of course, this is a very general statement. This is not always the case. Uh, but there's advantages into coding for immutability, and I just wanted to point that out. With that, I'm going to conclude this method. Uh, sorry. I will conclude this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please uh, uh, give me some feedback in the comments below, uh, good and bad. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoy making this video for you. So uh, have a great day. See you next time. And please just don't forget to subscribe.